Testing, testing. I'm a little Sound dork, dorky dork. I'm really a dork. You hear a little dork? <laughs> you call me a little dork? A little turd. Dork. Alright, say hi to everybody, Gracie. We got some sound. Hi. Camera's up here. Hi. <laughs> All right, we got HC Aqua in the house. We got Dank Tanks in the house, and we got Mama Three. You know who that is? When did we get her? Uh, which one? Which one? The Paku. We yeah. got that one about a year ago. Wow. Alrighty. It's huge. Today we're going to be talking about filtration, the different types. Um, watch out! Okay. Can't be hitting that. Here, watch out! Let me get serious. <clears throat> Alright, today we're going to be talking about filtration, the different types, what their uses are, um, how you can save money with it, the different types of uh, little DIY things you can do for them, and I've got a filter that I built over here for my saltwater tank that I'll be showing you all as well. And uh, Alright, you say hi to everybody Gracie. We'll see y'all here in a little bit. Go play with your toys and go watch some TV. And I'll call you in whenever it's time to be done. And go back. Hey, go eat your yogurt. <laughs> you okay? My brother's forgotten. <laughs> All right. Well, first thing I want to talk about is the different types of filtration that there are. That you have. Uh, Let's see if I can get this to where it's not shining on my face so much. I got bad glare on my glasses. Maybe not. I don't know. There, that helps a little bit. Well, maybe. All right, yeah. Talk about the different types. There's uh, sponge filtration. There's hang on bags, under gravel. Um, even plants and the substrate can be used as filtration your glass uh, everything really as long as it'll hold some biological um, some bacteria it can be a filter really uh, I built them out of sterilite tubs rubbermaid tubs um, this one I'm going to show you here in a minute is a HOB that I converted over to be an algae scrubber as well as a, a, it's got a surface skimmer as well it's going to be for my saltwater tank uh, this is actually running a sump on here I run sponges on most of my other tanks but this one and my other hundred gallon across the way there both have a sump on them <clears throat> uh, inside those sumps I have nothing but sponge uh, sponge is my favorite thing I love sponge and uh, it's got a filter shot, and then it runs into a five gallon bucket that's just packed with sponge. And then it, it's in a 30 gallon tank that's again just packed with sponge, and then a pump on each side pumping it back up in. And yeah, it does keep it crystal clear. I take out the sponges, uh, a couple of the sponges every time I do a water change and rinse them, and then uh, different sponges every time. That way I don't kill off too much bacterial uh, growth at a time or anything like that. Anybody else in the chat yet? Is it just me and you, HC? No, there's four watching. There's nobody else chatting. Alrighty. Um, but yeah, uh, for the most part, I use sponge filtration in the fish room. And I have uh, the dual sponges that you can get off eBay for really cheap. I, I love those things. They're really cheap and they work really well. And, uh. <clears throat> nope. Yeah, what's going on there, Dank? Uh, but yeah, even in my my hang on bags, anything I mod or anything like that, I always mod it with sponge. Sponge is again my favorite type of uh, filtration media that there is. That and then poly filter if you have to get like super clean water or something like that to find really fine particles out. Poly filter works amazing as well. Uh, but yeah, hang on bags they all have their uses. uses. Uh, because I have a big fish room here, 
that's why I tend to stay towards the sponge filtration so I can run multiple tanks off of my one filter off the, uh, off the one pump I have a big JCOD pump that runs probably I think there's 36 sponges in my room right now um, but yeah that one that one pump runs all of those with room to spare and uh, that thing was only like 130 bucks off of eBay and it's JCOD J-E-C-O-D um, see if I can find a picture of it here I think I have one saved Apparently I don't. Okay, yep. Like I said, it's just a JCOD, uh, JCOD air pump, a uh, big old linear piston. It's almost dead quiet. I sit it in my closet, and uh, I got a foam padding under it to make sure it doesn't uh, vibrate too much on our hardwood hardwood floors. But other than that, it's it's dead silent. Even when I open the door, you can hardly hear it. And uh, that's what we run in the fish room there. And then in these, it's just, uh, you know, the sump with the five-gallon bucket and the 30-gallon uh, tank. And then on the other one there across the room, it's, again, a sump with the five-gallon bucket. And then it's into a Rubbermaid tote. And then one pump sent in the back. Uh, yeah, HOBs have their uses, too. You know, those are, if you only got, like, one, maybe two tanks to run, I, I would prefer HOBs over any type of like sump or anything like that because sumps do take quite a bit of uh, upkeep and everything to make sure all your medias and everything stay fresh and good and uh, that way you can keep your water clear but <clears throat> grab a drink of my tea here uh, where's that HOB filters, yeah, they can all be modded to make some really cool filters and everything. You can do lots with them, um, especially the Aqua Clears. The 70s and 110s are my favorite of the HOBs. You can put a lot of sponge and uh, and poly filter back there, and you can have almost crystal clear water in anything. What's going on, Lumpy Dog? How's everything going today? Uh, yeah, they're making some some other pretty good HOBs now. Like the uh, the Azu is a little it's a cheap one, but they work pretty well, pretty long lasting. They have a nice little filter area to mod out and everything. And then of course putting the intake sponges on that's always a first thing that I do if I'm using the HOB. canister filters they again they have their uses I actually have an FX4 in there in the in my storage room and uh, I used to use it I used it on uh, one of my 100 gallon tanks is what I was using it, using it on but once I got up to where I was running six seven tanks I believe is whenever I shut that down and started going the sponge filtration route um, even in those tanks where I like this one pretty highly uh, stocked and a couple of my other ones are pretty highly stocked even though sponge filtered tanks in there that are real high stock and everything like that uh, the only thing I do to help keep the water clear is a, a power head and then I wrap poly filter around it and uh, that takes all the, the small particles out of the water uh, some of the larger ones and stuff like that <clears throat> Yeah, canister filters, they can be, if I was to do the same thing, uh, run one of those, I would do the same thing and mod it with a bunch of sponge and different uh, polyfill. Uh, Lava Rock makes a good one too. Uh, yeah, actually the, uh, let's see. Yeah, Lumpy Dog, Holy Monsters, most of my fish would be feeders for that tank. Uh, got mostly small ones and stuff, huh? Yeah, this this guy, where's he at? Right here, the uh, Paku. He's almost dinner plate size around. Um, him and this guy up here, this Oscar, the Tiger Oscar, right there, got into a fight the other day. You can see he ripped that Tiger Oscar up a little bit right there on the top fin. But 
other than that, they all get along pretty well. Uh, the Tiger Oscars, usually all the Oscars stick together, and then he stays off by himself. <laughs> that, uh, I like that shimmer that comes off of this, but it, it gets a little disco ball-y at a time. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty clear. You can see a little little bit of stuff floating around in there, but not much. It uh, stays pretty well. Pretty well clear and clean. That double overflow and sump take care of that pretty well. <clears throat> That's the one benefit to a sump that, that trumps just about everything else is that how clean the water can stay. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I figure we'll, we'll talk about some sumps now. And uh, I've done a couple DIY sumps. There's some that you can buy over the counter. Uh, well, not really over the counter. Most of the time you have to order them online or something like that. Um, but there are quite a few out there. Uh, some high end ones, like the ones like the King of DIY uses. I for forget what the company is called, but those are some really awesome sumps that those people make. Uh, they've got the built in reactors and all that stuff in them. And then there's a Aquion makes a few of them that you can get online. Uh, I think Marineland may make one or two, but I tend to stay away from Marineland products. I've, I've had to, I've had bad experience with them, especially their lights. Their LEDs are terrible. Um, actually, I'm supposed to have a couple more lights coming in here in a couple days. Some new ones to to replace some of those lights in there. Hopefully. Hopefully my plants will start growing a little better with those. Those DIY LED setups I have do all right, but they're not the best. Anything going on in chat? Yeah, I, uh, I DIY a lot of my filtration, uh, especially, especially my sumps. Uh, who's the boss of the tank? Definitely in the Paku here or here. You see him it'll push everybody to this other side here sometimes. Once he gets a little upset. And we've got our convicts in here and stuff and turquoise severums, uh, parrots, blood parrots. There's even a uh, bluegill perch in there. Yeah, he's gonna be going outside to a tub pretty soon with the uh, arowana and the tiger shovel nose <clears throat> get them all out there and get ready for the for the big pond or the big tank build whichever one happens first uh, me and the kids have been getting outside putting in some work on that uh, on that pond here the last couple days we've got quite a bit of dirt moved still a whole lot left to do in it yeah Where's he at here? See if I can move out the way. Right here, you can just see his uh, his fins, right right back there above my thumb. That convict back there, he's our the original fish that we had in this uh, in our fish room. Well, the first thing we started out with was a pair of convicts. Yeah, we're down in Texas, Dank. We're uh, Snyder, Texas, to be specific. It's a Basically centered right between Midland, Lubbock, and Abilene. We're an hour and a half away from each of those towns. Yep. Um, oh, here's that. Show y'all that filter that I built for the saltwater tank. I took this Marineland Penguin filter that I had here. It's built for like a 20 gallon tank or something like that I can't remember but uh, took a filter intake or another hang on back intake and I'm attach it right here to this bottom part and it'll make it to where it surface skims it's gonna be for the hermit crab so the water level is gonna stay low it's gonna be to where it surface skims right there if I need to bring it up any I can just shorten this and then back here it's just gonna have some uh, some of my filter floss right here where the water first comes in and then I've got some sponge back here for bio and then it's going to have this sheet of uh, 
what is it, knitting mesh. It's going to be right here on top. And I'm going to have a light pointed directly at that. And that's going to be an algae scrubber. And it'll have its one last set of uh, uh, mechanical filtration right here before it goes back into the tank. So yeah, that's going to be the new saltwater uh, filter for the hermit crab tank. It's about to get an upgrade to a 20 gallon. Yeah, that was a, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, that was a uh, Marine Land Penguin uh, 20, I believe. Should end up being a pretty cool filter if I can make it work right and everything. <laughs> Still waiting on spring there in Michigan. Uh, it's barely hitting us here in Texas now, man. Uh, last week we had a couple days uh, that were up in the 80s and 90s, but then we had a couple days that were down in the 30s and 40s too. It was insane. I have a saying here in, here in Texas, if you don't like the weather, just wait for a couple hours. It constantly changes. But the only thing we never get is rain or snow. We have droughts almost every year. Uh, the, I think like two years ago was the only year we haven't had a drought in like the last 20. Uh, it's insane. We need to get farther down south, down towards the coast and everything. There it rains a lot more, a lot better climate. More humid, but I can deal with that. What's going on down here in the chat? Snowed there. Uh, where, where are you at, Dink? Central New York. Oh man, I just I can't even imagine living up north. It's way too cold up there for me. I can't even handle the freezing cold down here in West Texas. The snow just or uh, cold just hops on my bones and shrivels me up. I can't do crap. Ugh. Here in this little bit warmer weather here in Texas makes it a little easier on ponds and stuff as well. So, man, it's 72 in oh, it's 72 in the house. <laughs> now, right now in our house, it's probably somewhere right around 80 degrees. But we try to keep it a little bit warm that way, I don't have to heat the tanks or anything for the fish room just makes it easier on the light bill let me see if I can adjust this because it's this is starting to get to me I know it's messing with y'all guess I'll just have to look like this so y'all don't have to see the glare off my glasses <laughs> no, I I handle that that warm 80 degree temperature perfect. But uh, here in West Texas, it's super dry, so we don't have to worry about it being uh, 80 and humid or anything like that. It's always you know it's 80 and super dry right in this house right now. And as long as you got a fan going, it's not too bad. That's really all I run. Even during the summers, we run one air conditioner mainly in the kids' room, and then other than that, it's just fans. <laughs> yeah, she was happy last night. It dropped down uh, into like the 60s or something like that inside of our room. I had the windows open and forgot about them. <laughs> it got cold in there. Yeah, but it's still dropping real low overnight here. Getting up to the 90s during the day, dropping down into like the 40s and 50s overnight. It's it's pretty terrible. It's uh, a lot of sickness and everything going around from all that temperature change. And uh, like I do uh, I do windshields for a living. And I own my own windshield company, so this weather actually works out great for me because that makes a windshield crack out real easy. The changes in the temperature are the worst on a windshield. Yeah. 
Yeah. I hate them cold days going out there trying to do an install. Uh, my hands don't want to work, don't want to do nothing. Yep. Got to do what you got to do, though, to make that money. Ah, that's bothering me. Tell me that ain't bothering y'all, because I, kn I know it is. It's bothering me. Guess I need to just quit looking at myself, huh? But uh, any questions about filtration or anything, just go ahead and ask them. Uh, I definitely like to help y'all learn and help learn and learn something from y'all if possible. Still only got four watching here. What do we got on likes? Everybody been liking it up and everything? Oh yeah, I've DIY'd plenty of sponge filters. Um, I usually just use a PVC pipe, drill plenty of holes into it, and then silicone it to a rock or a tile or something like that. And then uh, just slide the sponge filter over it. Uh, I use some of, give me just a second. This type of sponge is the type of uh, stuff I like to use in my tanks and everything. And uh, I just take slices of this and then fold it around. Oh. Me and this camera, I, I cannot figure out which way to go. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, usually a bigger piece, but you'll fold it around back on itself and zip tie it to itself. And then slide that over a sponge filter, over a uh, tube of some sort, DIY sponge filter. Plenty of them. Now I always, always keep some of this just sitting around in my sumps. Then in here, there's plenty of extra just sitting around in there and in my other sump. That way in case I need to start any other tank up. And uh, I don't keep a quarantine system just sitting around. So whenever I need to quarantine a fish, just grab a little bit of this and throw it in. Usually just run an air filter, uh, a, like an air line in it and just throw this in there not even a sponge filter or nothing like that just let this actually the bacteria that's on this plus the air movement of the the water movement filter it out and it's usually only temporary for a week or a couple weeks anyway so works perfect <clears throat> yeah um uh, any questions about anything just ask away don't know only a couple people here so I'm sure I'm not gonna get a ton of questions maybe it'll start picking up pretty soon and people will start hopping in eventually yeah That lumpy dog, lava rock, and every tank or filter. Just a few pieces in HOB and in instant cycle. Yep, works perfect too. I did that for a long time, and then uh, I just got to where the sponges could be reused and re-rinsed constantly, and it also acted as a mechanical filtration at the same time as bio. That's why I switched to that. Uh, but yeah, lava rock is very cheap and does the job perfect. I mean, there's it'll even house. Uh, the anaerobic bacteria, if you do it right in, the, in your uh, sumps and stuff, you can get it to grow the anaerobic bacteria for you and uh, denitrify. Yeah, this stuff comes in handy. I, I've actually got some big pieces in some tanks, and uh, I love it. Lava rock is one of my favorite types of rock. That and... Uh, what was that stuff called? Uh, Colorado River Rock, the same stuff that is in here. 
comes in all kinds of different colors and it has like these speckles and stuff in it. That stuff is awesome too. Yep. Uh, also for filtration, uh, for filtration, if I can talk, uh, we got pothos fines up here. That helps a lot to keep the nitrates down in here. Uh, I've got some denitrifying bacteria growing in here for sure because my nitrates in here never creep above five. I've tested them after you know a couple weeks of not changing water and they were at, still at five and ten. So I know I've got some type of denitrifying bacteria in there or those pothos vines are doing some awesome wicked work, which <laughs> I don't think it's that one because they're not that big, but. The little black and yellow striped under the TV just scared the bejesus out of the Jack. Oh, uh, the Buddy Kofri scared the Jack Dempsey. <laughs> Yeah, those are the only African cichlids I have, actually, are the Buddy Kofri tilapia. We used to have a, uh, in this tank, there was a, uh, what is it called, a jewel cichlid? Yeah, we had one of those, but he was, when I adopted him, he was already like five years old, and then he was with us for a couple years, and he finally passed away, I'm thinking due to old age. I, I checked on him when I pulled him out of the tank and everything, and he didn't have no marks on him, no nothing, he was... He looked healthy all the way up to the day he died. He was very, you know, active and healthy. I think he just, the old age caught up with him. Yep, pea gravel substrate and lava rock. Yep. I do everything as cheap as I can do too. And that sponge right there, this stuff, I order it from China off of eBay. It takes a month to get to me, but I, it comes in big, like, four by four sheets. And it's only like three bucks a sheet free shipping and everything and yeah I use pull filter sand in most of my stuff here in this one's pull filter sand with some uh, black gravel just to change it up a little bit so all my all my stuff started looking the same with pull filter sand in every tank I've had to start changing it up a little bit yeah it takes dang near a month to get that stuff from China uh, <laughs> It's insane. It comes in big old long packages. I, I usually get them uh, like 10 sheets at a time for about 20 bucks or something like that. But it works pretty awesome. And like I said, it's cheap, reusable. I've only had to order it probably twice now in like three years. Bio balls and rings, not too expensive. Yep, bio balls and uh, bio rings, the ceramic rings work great. Uh, bio balls work great, especially the ones that have the sponge inside of them. Uh, HC Aqua, I order it at uh, eBay. Just look on eBay for, uh, I believe it's aquarium sponge filter mat, I believe is what I looked up. And uh, I believe I was able to find it on there. No, not Amazon. <laughs> I don't. I don't order nothing off of Amazon because I don't have Prime, and uh, on eBay, most everything has the the fast and free shipping, no matter what. So I usually order off of eBay instead of Amazon. Plus, I ain't got no affiliate links or anything like that. So cleaned up, quick creep. Pea gravel looks good. Very nice variety of colors, shapes, and a couple of dollars for a 50 pound bag. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. I haven't um, really ever used any of the pea gravel or anything like that for any of my tanks so far. But uh, I have been hearing about people using it and that it came in a variety of colors. Uh, so I probably will be giving it a try pretty soon. Uh, yeah, I had to trim the beard down today, as you can see starting to get a little long, a little scraggly, looking like a hobo. Couldn't be looking like a homeless person on my live stream. <clears throat> yep, it's been a been a pretty long day here in uh here in the Gaddis land over here. Uh, been doing out doing installs and everything for my windshield business today. 
uh, I have a friend that's got a body shop that I pull windows out and reinstall for him to do, do his body work and that's what we've been doing today yeah I always look for a new look and stuff too uh, dank because I, I mean everything's in my tanks they start looking monotonous because I like to use the pull filter sand and stuff like that so I like to add gravel in every once in a while with it uh, to spice it up and then I've got one tank in there that's got black sand now and uh, I traded my geckos uh, a couple of my baby geckos that I produced last year they were all males and we have too many males in the colony already so I traded them off and uh, I got some uh, ragonite and some black sand for the uh, upgrade on the saltwater tank that I'm going to be doing here uh, so that one's going to have black sand as well and then I collected uh, collected some gravel from Lake uh, Lake Ray Roberts where my mom uh, lake right by where my mom lives collected some really awesome uh, oh uh, yeah leopard geckos you want to see one of my leopard geckos I'll grab it real quick they're just right here oh, crap. spill my tea while I'm at it big guy my big male Ondo right here a little overweight big old fella <laughs> yeah he likes to just chill on my shoulder here sometimes just put him there for a little while no he's not a giant he's just a normal variety but he's uh he's overweight he just eats a whole lot Yeah. Let him chill on my shoulder here for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep, he's just a fatty. Big old guy. Yeah, he's about a good a good probably eight or nine inches long. Yeah. Normal variety. Got a Murphy's patternless and a uh Hypo and Marine White and Yellow that'll be producing for us this year. So hopefully we'll have some cool color varieties come out with the babies this year. Yeah, this is definitely my wife's favorite. He likes to have his back rubbed. So let me see if I can get him to do that real quick. He'll poke his back up if you rub it. Yeah, there he goes. He's poking that back up towards it. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. What's going on there, Life with Fish? Awesome stream earlier. I was glad I could catch it between doing windshields. Yep, I love my leopard geckos. I've got, I think we have a total of five now that we got rid of the three babies yep. um, anything else y'all want to know about these guys they're uh, they're over there in my 50 gallon low boy the uh, leopard uh, the walking dead tank yep. he's a cool fella He's quite a bit overweight though. He's starting to get those little uh, sacks under their arms when they're too fat. So I gotta, he's been on a diet for about a week and I think he's got probably about another week left. They're starting to go down. <laughs> Sit up here for a little bit, guy. Come on, come on, go, go. There you go. If my iguana wasn't such a butthead, I would pull him out but he'd probably try to bite me. <laughs> um, anything else? Uh, Y'all wanna know about the filtration or 
Anything like that? Just ask. Um, oh, <laughs> I need a chameleon. We had two Veld chameleons at one time, but uh, our female got egg bound and ended up passing away. And then our male was, uh, he was about seven years old once he finally passed. Uh, I think he eventually, I think, became a little calcium deficient over time and just slowed down. Uh, they are pretty tricky to keep if you don't know what you're doing. And those were actually some of my first reptiles, so I really didn't know what I was doing. What I do want to get is some uh, Mount Meru Jackson's chameleons, the little bitty ones. Those are awesome. Yeah. Chameleons are really cool, but like I said, they're it's weird with their upkeep because they have to have that UV and they have to have certain uh, certain uh, elements and everything in their diet and they don't have them and they will pass away they'll get all eye infections and all types of stuff and mouth infections it's crazy they are tricky yeah high humidity you gotta have it real high humidity in there almost almost constantly raining or misting in there uh, if you don't have that they dry out they're, they'll start shedding bad and it's just, they're a high maintenance animal for sure. That's what it is, high maintenance. Take a lot of upkeep, a lot of watching, and a lot of upfront money. Yep, um, everybody liking the leopard gecko hat here? <laughs> Uh, whenever I had mine, I used a uh, one of the cool mist humidifiers that you would use for uh, for like if if you had a stuffy nose or congestion or stuff like that, and then you run a humidifier in your room. I used one of those and then just connected a tube to it and ran it straight into the gecko cage, and that would usually do pretty good. It kept a kept it nice and humid in there up to about 80% or so. <clears throat> But uh, you have to have a lot of airflow in there too. You can't just have it humid in there and stuffy, because uh, they will it'll start growing bacteria and mold and everything like that. And then, but if you have the airflow, then that's getting rid of your humidity, so it, it's counteracting it, and it's just it's difficult. It gets a little tricky. Now there are harder to keep animals out there, but they're definitely not the easiest. Miss Kings with digital aqua herp keeper. Yeah. Those uh that's those that's when you start getting into the putting some money out up front on those chameleons. You gotta have their, their humidifier, you gotta have their uh your their U V A bulb, their U V B bulb. Uh, you gotta make sure that their temperature gradients in the tank are, you know, pretty pretty well spot on. Yeah, the Miss Kings work good. Uh, I used to use a Reptifogger too, but that it, they kept popping leaks on them for some reason, and so I just eventually got rid of that and then went to the DIY humidifiers set up for for my chameleons. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and go put him back up. He's just probably getting a bit cold out here without his heat mat. Yeah, I've seen uh, those Miss Kings and stuff, uh, as well as uh, another high-end brand. Uh, what was 
on Brian Barchek's channel. Uh, he's got a couple chameleons on there, and he ordered some that were a couple hundred bucks for the setup, and but they are awesome. They work real well. He can run like six or seven cages off of one pump, and it's pretty awesome. Lifeless fish, got to run. Do you have a good one? Uh, we're coming to the end of the show here pretty quick anyway. Uh, we've got about 10 minutes left, so any other questions or anything that y'all want to know? we got about 10 minutes left. Then we're going to be hopping over to the uh, Steamfot live stream. One fish, two fish, able to make it in, huh? How's it going today? <laughs> I always got to hate when work interrupts your home life. I'm good here. How about yourself, one fish? Yep, got to make that make that money, so you got to go to work. Bills don't get paid if that don't happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, we were talking about filtration today. Uh, one fish, two fish. And uh, so if you have any types of questions or anything that you want to ask on filtration or about this tank behind me or anything else, please do. Uh, like I said, we're going to be setting up our saltwater tank here in a couple days, and I will be coming out with a video on that. And uh, I may, I may do a little short video on how I made this uh, this little filter here that I showed y'all. I may do a little how-to video on it. It still needs to get cleaned up and everything before I put it in use, but this was just a quick rough draft of it. Yeah, algae scrubber slash skimmer slash filter. And yes, I do. I do plan on making a couple of giant sponge filters for those uh, outdoor tubs that I'm going to be doing for the arowana and stuff. Uh, so I do want to do a a huge one, probably a good two, three foot tall, and then as big around as I can make it. Uh, but yeah, I definitely that's definitely a DIY project right there. That's like four, three or four different uh, HOB filters uh, pieced together to make that thing. <laughs> but yep. Yeah. Hopefully it works pretty good. I'm gonna have to do a little tweaking with it and everything, but uh, as long as it keeps that saltwater tank good and clear, I'll be happy with it. Yep. Um, all right, let's uh, let's go ahead and close this thing out. Gracie, do you want to come say hi? Uh, say hi and bye to everybody. Yep. We'll go ahead and close it out for the day. Here's Gracie to say y'all have a good one. And have a good one. <laughs> Goodbye. Yep. Uh, remember, one fish, two fish is in here, so go ahead and say hi and bye to her, too. Hi, bye. <laughs> have fun. And one fish, two fish is awesome. Yep. <laughs> I like her. She sure is. She actually just set up her first tank the other day. Yeah, and she is awesome. One yeah. fish, two fish is awesome. <laughs> All right. Y'all have a good one. Y'all have a good one. That's my hair. That's my pocket.